long as you try, you shall succeed. Christ Jesus is our wisdom. As a Christian, if you want to grow, spend more time in the Word. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you are getting, get understanding. Are you looking for an SHS where excellence is a household name and students show strong principles and moral awareness? At the Life International College, our goal is to create bridges for students to walk on in pursuit of excellence. Our students are stimulated by high quality of teaching provided by passionate and committed staff. Call us on 0208-156-742. Life International College, Christ, Knowledge, Excellence. Welcome dear friend to Treasures of Wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. And with all you are getting, get understanding. Today we are taking the part three of business success. Dominion for business success. Dominion for you to get success in your business. And I'm giving it a subtitle as the secret of success in your business. You know as a business person you want to succeed. As a business person you want to excel. And so I'm here to show you what the Word of God says about success in business. I know that you said, I have toiled all night and caught nothing. Like Peter said, Peter toiled all night and caught nothing. But God said, launch out into the deep. And he said, we've struggled all night and caught nothing. But at your word, we shall do it. Today, you might have attempted all the things I'm going to share with you. But if you take it again and do it, you shall be successful. Because success is the progressive realization of predetermined, well-thought goals, stabilized by faith and balanced by belief. So I'm very confident that before we end this session today, you go back to your business and you shall break through in your business. Today I want to talk about a specific area of business called partnership. Partnership. Today I want to talk about business partnership. How does it mean to be a partner? What does it mean? What does it take? What are the responsibilities? And what are the advantages of partnership? There are many people in the country today that say, I have a partner in the UK, I have a partner in the US, I have a partner in China, I have a partner in Japan. They are partners. No, a partner means he's a partaker of whatever they have spent time to invest in. Paul is also talking about partnership. So go with me to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1 verse 7. I'm going to read Philippians chapter 1 verse 7. I'm talking on partnership. Even as it is meet for me to think of you all, because I have you in my heart, it in, in as much as both in my bones and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers of my grace. Look at that again. You are partakers of my grace. He wasn't talking about the grace of God. He was talking about a particular grace that he, Paul, had. He says the people in Philippi, they were partakers of his grace. How do you be a partaker of somebody's grace? How do you partake of the specific grace on somebody? It's because of partnership. If you are in partnership with the person, then the grace on that person will come upon you. If you are in partnership with the person, then the favors of that person shall come upon you. You see, if you are a partner with a company, an, an IT company in, 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 in Asia, the, 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 they have made the product already. They have got their market share already. So you selling that product, you will get the same benefit. You didn't do the experiment. You don't have to do marketing already. They have done the experiment. They have come out with their product. They've come out with their marketing strategies. Everybody says the product is good. But the moment you enter into partnership, you will get the same profit. In the same way, when businesses begin to partner with ministries, when businesses begin to partner with churches, when businesses begin to partner with corporate entities, which are God's entities, the grace of God upon those companies, upon those churches, upon those ministries will come upon your company as well. 
Today I'm going to explain to you, you can intentionally be a partaker of the grace on somebody. So let's now go to the Philippians chapter 1. Let's start from verse 3. What did they do that Paul is saying that they are partakers of his grace? What did the church in Philippi, what did they do? Verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now pause over there. Who are the people you remember? The people you remember the most are the people who also remember you. They are fond of you. They call you. They give you gifts. They visit you. They tell you how important you are in their lives. Because they are important to you, because they remember you, it is reciprocal. You also remember them. So Paul is saying, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. When you get your paycheck, who do you remember? Do you remember uh, your church? Do you remember your friends who are in ministry? Do you remember people who are spreading the gospel? When you get your paycheck, who do you remember? When you get good news, who do you share with? Partnership is a powerful tool. Partnership is a very strong bond. Partnership is a very strong cohesion. And so, the best you can do to have dominion in your business as a servant of God or as a child of God or as a member of any Christian community is get into partnership. Get into partnership. Get into partnership. You start by sharing your story. You continue by praying. Now, be in fellowship. If your church is going to have evangelism somewhere, take three days off your business. Take three days from work. Ask for casual leave. Join them. Pay your own fare. Provide your own food. And those three days of fellowship will become three years of financial glory. Get into fellowship. Paul says, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day till now. My God, there are people who are receiving great rewards because of their partnership. There are people who are receiving massive rewards because of their partnership. You know, as I'm preaching to you now, I spend my hours fasting, praying, studying the word to come and preach. There are some of you who are watching. The Lord is speaking to you to be in partnership. And it's your partnership from day one that has brought us this far. And I want to say thank you to all our partners. Those who are praying for us spiritually from all over the nation. And those who are just sending us messages to encourage us. And those who are saying that we want to push this ministry higher. And those who are giving financial support. May my God also supply your need. May the grace of God upon my life, as Paul said, may that grace be upon you also. Partnership is powerful. Partnership is strong. Partnership is closest to what we call marriage. Christian marriage is covenant. And a partner can become a covenant. Because partnership, the same word for covenant is the same word for partnership. So when you become a partner, in the true sense, you are taking a covenant responsibility. And because of covenant responsibility, any blessing upon the senior partner shall come upon you also. And anybody who wants to attack you as a junior partner, when I go on my knees to pray and the ministry is praying, your knees shall be met according to our God's need in glory. May you receive that supply in glory. May you receive that supply in glory. May you receive that supply in glory. Maybe you have never thought of partnership. You say, what can I do? Partnership is never too small or too big. Partnership. Partnership is never too small or too big. You can always start. You can become a partner. I was having a chat with somebody. This person was a student. And the person would save some of her money, but it was a woman, and she would send it to some place to give to certain people in partnership. Today, God has lifted and blessed that person. May God lift you and bless you as well. Partnership 
It's extremely important. Now go to verse 6. Philippians 1. Be confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That is what we call progressive realization. That is success. Progressive realization. From the day one that you heard of this ministry, from the day one that you became a partaker, from the day one that you became a sponsor, you will continue till now, and my God will cause grace also to abound to you. That is extremely important. Then he mentions verse 7. Go with me now to verse 7. Even as it is made for me to think of this toward you, because I have you in my heart. Friend, few people can have space in your heart. Friend, very, very, very few people can have space in your heart. Not even in your house, not in your mind, but in your heart. Paul says, I have you in my heart. I have you in my heart. You see, when you enter into strong partnership with people, you weave into the strongest part of their lives. That's how strong partnership can be. That's how powerful partnership can be. He says, it is meet for me to say this and to think this about you. Because... I have you in my heart. Even in my bones and the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers. So a partner is somebody who you have in your heart. So as partners, Jesus Christ says he will supply your need. You are in his heart. Now, why should, let me ask you, let me turn the question. Why should a partner Receive the same benefits as the partaker, the original owner. Why? And I say that again. Why should a partner receive the same grace as the senior person, the original partaker? Why? You know, your work will be so small. But that small component is what makes the gospel reach the last person who must hear it. Yes, it takes every person's effort for the gospel to go out. So, in partnership, we don't discount the small you have done. No, your small part makes it complete. I pray, may you begin to see the value in partnership. I pray, may you be willing to just partake in partnership. I pray, may you pay the price needed for partnership. I pray, may you be involved in true partnership. I pray, may you find avenues to to, to demonstrate your partnership. I pray, may you never stop looking for new partners to partner with. Because, you see, the method of evangelism is changing. The message is the same. But the method of evangelism is changing. So we need partners. Partners in social media. Partners on other platforms. Partners in music. Partners in worship. So that we use all those avenues to bring Christ to the people's lives. That's partnership. I want to invite you today to make a personal decision. To become a partner. First of all, a partner with the gospel in general. Be a partner. Pray for Christianity. Pray for the gospel in general. But secondly, be a partner of treasures of wisdom. Be a partner with what Jesus is doing in the lives of many people. Because as a businessman, one of the secrets for dominion success in business is partnership. One of the genuine secrets for dominion, for Christian success, is partnership. Your partnership means you will consistently and diligently play your part. And as you diligently play your part, God will bless that part. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how small. I'm going to read another scripture. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Partnership. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above, All that we ask or think according to the 
power that worketh in us. We have seen how people who start small, they end up very big. And then we've also seen how people who start somehow big, they just dwindle and they fold up. What is the difference? The difference, among other things, is partnership. Because the world is becoming a global village. And if you don't become a partner with something bigger than you, you will be swallowed in what is going on. So as a business person, consider serious partnership with Christ. Consider serious partnership with the Lord Jesus Christ. Decide that you are going to be a part of what God is doing. Your resources, you want to use it for soul winning. Your time, come to the chapel, spend time in the chapel. Your talent, help people, train the young people with your talent. And above all, your financial resources. Use it for the expansion of the gospel. Now, Paul is saying, God is able to do according to all that, exceedingly above. According to the power that works in us. The power there is the power of partnership. There must be a partnership that God can use to bless you. According to the power that works in us. That power there is the power of partnership. I pray may you take your partnership seriously. I pray may you honor your partnership seriously. Maybe you are thinking of what can I do? There are many things you can do, but three of them are extremely important. Number one, your tithe is a covenant and is demanded of partners. So if you say you are a partner and your partner requires that from you and you don't give it, it means that you are only loving him with your mouth and your heart is far away because partnership is something that will cost you. It's a covenant. Number two, your vow. Many people, they make a vow and they forget about it. It is serious to vow and not to give. He says it's even better you don't vow at all. So in partnership, your tithe, your vow, and the third one is called a sacrificial offering in partnership. You always want to prove to your partner that you are loyal to that partner. You always want to let your partner know that the two of you, you are agreeing together. And so these are areas in partnership where he's saying that God will do exceedingly abundantly above. Go with me to another scripture. 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 4. It fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in theater to eat bread. Pause. Partnership develops gradually. Note it down. Partnership develops gradually. Because it's a relationship. So you can't have a partnership all of a sudden. No. Elisha goes to a village called Shunem. But as he passed by, there was a great woman. This can be a wealthy woman. This can be a businesswoman. And this businesswoman... She constrained Elisha to eat bread. You know, Elisha was not hungry. He didn't need the bread. There are times when it takes the business people to constrain the the, the other people, the, the men of God, the servants of God. So this woman constrained Elisha to eat bread. So it became a habit that as often as he passed, He turned there to eat bread. So partnership begins on a small note. You see, when you start your partnership, you may not even know how it's going to end. You are just in a sincere relationship with the person. Verse 9. And she said unto her husband, 
Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. You know, people can perceive spiritual things. The word perceive means I don't have a reason. I have not done a research about him. I have not read his biography. But something tells me that if we partner with this company, something will happen to us. I pray may the Holy Ghost speak to as many people that they can perceive as this great woman has perceived. So they continue doing it continually. Verse 10, let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. Let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be that when he comes to us, that he might turn in hither. This is what I call ministerial comfort. You see, he comes there, he, they will give him a seat, he will sit down, they will give him the bread, he will eat, and they will chat and chat and chat. He will pray for them, he goes away. Sometimes he will spend an hour, sometimes two hours, sometimes even four or five hours. He didn't care. He was still doing it. Then one day the lady said, can we get a basic ministerial comfort for this man? Let's build a small shelter. Let's put a table in there. Let's build a small shelter, a small table on it, a stool by the table, a candlestick, so that when he is passing by, he can lie down. Friend, you are listening to me. The goods you deal in, you can use some as a ministerial comfort to the, the ministry that blesses you. The church you go to, or the people around you who are Christians, you are going into partnership. So you see, it didn't start this way, but this is the way it ended. Now, because of this that they did, if you follow the story to the end, one day, the servant of Elisha said, I sense this woman doesn't have a child. You see, when you meet the need of the man of God, God will meet your need. What you give with your money, God will give you something that money cannot supply. So what you give with substance, God will give you something that substance cannot supply. So they gave Elisha bread, but God through Elisha gave them a son. Your partnership will give you things beyond what your company can give you. Write it down. Your partnership can give you things beyond what your company can give you. And finally, they gave the boy. The boy was sick. The boy died. They prayed, and the boy was healed. I pray, may any sick thing in your life be healed. Now, finally, the blessing of partnership, Psalm 112. The blessing of partnership, Psalm 112. Start from verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. That's partnership. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Say amen. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Say amen. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endureth forever. That is partnership. Unto the upright there ariseth light in darkness. When you are in partnership, any time darkness comes upon you, light shall rise up upon your darkness. He is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. A good man showeth favor, like the woman and the husband did unto Elisha. A good man showeth favor. He lend it. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely, he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Seven. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. When you are in partnership, it doesn't mean evil tidings will not come. But when they come, the Lord will make a way for you. You shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Your heart shall be fixed, trusting in the Lord. Verse 8. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. You don't fight your enemies. God takes care of your enemies because you are in partnership. Verse 9. He has dispersed abroad. This is what I'm talking about. 
In partnership, you disperse abroad. You give to people you don't even know. Just because you follow their ministry, you watch their TV, you listen to their message, you give, you disperse abroad. He's giving to the poor. His righteousness endure forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Every partner, may you be exalted with honor. Every partner, may you be exalted with honor. Today, I'm here as a servant of God. They will be scrolling our numbers. They will be scrolling our platforms that we are on. They will be scrolling our Facebook address, our, our Twitter, our, 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 all, the, all the social media platforms, and the phone number. I want to hear from you. Send us a message. Communicate with us. Become a partner. God is going to use the partnership to bless you because that's what he says he will do. He says he, your God, will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Remember, we are dealing with dominion for business success. And partnership is the part three, the law number three for business success. May the Lord bless you and your family. Amen. Bow your heads with me in prayer. I know today you want to give your life to Jesus. You can pray this simple prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I invite you to come into my life, to become my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I pray for all our viewers today. I pray mainly for businesses that are seeking to break the power of poverty and lack on their businesses. I release them for financial blessing and financial wealth. And I'm teaching the secret that can bring you that success. I pray, Lord, may they mix what they've heard with faith that it shall produce results in their lives. The Lord bless you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. As you try, you shall succeed. Christ Jesus is our wisdom. As a Christian, if you want to grow, spend more time in the Word. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you are getting, get understanding. Are you looking for an SHS where excellence is a household name and students show strong principles and moral awareness? At the Life International College, our goal is to create bridges for students to walk on in pursuit of excellence. Our students are stimulated by high quality of teaching provided by passionate and committed staff. Call us on 0208-156-742. Life International College, Christ, Knowledge, Excellence.